move this up anyway because our next guest is even taller than I am. Um, <laughs> I am very pleased to welcome to the podium Ralph Gaston. He is the board secretary for Synergistic Hawaii Agriculture Council. Full disclosure, I am the administrator of that program, so he and I interact a lot. He is first and foremost a Kau coffee farmer for uh, Isla Custom Coffees and Rusty's Hawaiian. And he has a lot of expertise, not only in um, exporting coffee, coffee quality, and focusing on the things that Shaq do really, does really well. But I'm gonna let him explain that all to you. So welcome, Ralph. All right, aloha everybody, and uh, thank you, Suzanne. I'll have to live up to that introduction, so I'll, I'll do my best. Um, as she said, my name is Ralph Gaston. I'm here to introduce Shaq to the KCFA and really to the Hawaii coffee industry. I don't know how much you know about Shaq. We've kind of worked quietly in the background for a little while, but I'm hoping at the end of this presentation that you'll get to see how Shaq is helping the industry in a lot of different ways. And now we're going to test this out. Wrong, wrong, wrong. Huh. Nope. Not sure. If you guys want to do it manually, you can, I guess. Or, yeah. Okay. All right. Well, let's go back one. No? There we go. Okay. We're good now. So, what is SHAC? SHAC stands for the Synergistic Hawaii Agriculture Council. It was founded in 2012, and the mission was to unite the members' resources and support the growth of Hawaii agriculture, also to remove economic barriers, expand markets, and promote trade for the producers. So who are the entities that are part of SHAC? I have a heavy thumb here. Um, there are four groups in SHAC right now. The HCA represents the, Hawaii, the uh, Hawaii coffee industry, the Hawaii Coffee Association. You have HEFNA. Hawaii Floriculture and Nursery Association, the Hawaii Papaya Industry Association, and our fourth and newest member, the Hawaii Macadamia Nut Association. So those are the four members of SHAC. And here's a little bit of what we do in, in photos. Um, the benefits of working as a group with everyone, with the other commodities, is that we can apply for bigger marketing grants. We have our unified export strategy. We have our market access program funding, which is the marketing grant we use for some of the shows you see here. And what happens is we can share expertise, we can share resources. If we figure something out about how to get funding or how to promote some, um, something at a show that's in the US, like the SCA Expo, that can help the floriculture guys who have a show in Las Vegas, which also attracts international people. So that ability to work together helps with co-promotions and it helps each commodity grow. Some of the other things that we do, and this is some pictures from the shows we've done first, the SCA Expo in Boston. We're doing Hawaii coffee cuppings and tastings at that show on the US mainland this year. That show is in Portland. Um, we are also have our export strategy, which is focused on Taiwan, China, and Hong Kong. And of those three regions, the Taiwan region is the one that shows the most promise. Um, we've had a lot of good response from the reverse trade mission that came to Kona this past year. As any of you know who've done work on, um, sorry, who've done work in Japan or Hong Kong or Korea, face-to-face -face is very important. Now that was tough to do with COVID because we weren't face-to-face, -face, but Last fall, we were able to bring a group over in the reverse trade mission and have a big event here in Kona, have farmers meet at Greenwell and kind of get face to face. And that's generated a lot of sales. So we've gotten a big movement forward in that program in the last couple of months. And we're looking forward to what it'll do in 2023. Um, other things that the Hawaii industry is doing, obviously we have a good reputation with the SCA, as I mentioned. Um, but we're also producing generic print photography and video assets to promote the Hawaii coffee industry. Um, we are able to do videos of each region and we did a video about the HDOA certification process. Now, that's a process that can be confusing to us here in Hawaii that use it all the time, let alone 
people who are looking to buy coffee and want to understand certification. So what we did is did a full video about the certification process. We have it in English that we can be used for buyers here. And we also had it translated to traditional Chinese. And these videos are gonna be available to the entire industry. We've sent them out a little bit so far. We also have a repository of each growing region showing up-to-date videos of them instead of things from the 80s and 90s. It's stuff that's shot in HD and is updated to 2020 or so. So it's a way for us to use video and marketing and, and photos to really showcase what our industry looks like now as opposed to maybe what it looked like a little bit before. There we go. To give an idea on the hard numbers of what goes in and what we're able to produce. The copay, which is paid for by HGA, was 8,500 to get into the Shack program. Each member group has a copay that they put in to operate Shack. What we got out of it was $166,972 in map activities, marketing activities last year. We also had a, a um, grant that we did with DBET. Um, that was the reverse trade mission we did. That was joint with DBET. There was an additional $35,000 grant. So for that copay of $8,500, we got over $200,000 of activity that Shaq was able to bring to promote Hawaii coffee um, out to Taiwan and some to Hong Kong and China. But, you know, Shaq um, has done a lot more than that. Here's some more photos from um, the Taiwan Coffee Show. And what we were saying earlier is it's producing sales already. The first picture was a picture from the Taiwan Expo on the right where they were promoting an individual Hawaii coffee. That was a separate booth, not the Hawaii coffee booth. But they were featuring the farmer there who um, Doug McKenna won first place in the HCA competition. And the very next month, there were orders for six or seven smaller farms here in Hawaii. A lot of the producers we work with in Taiwan are the, the roasters, the cafes. They're looking for that kind of individual connection. So it's not just people looking for containers full of coffee or five pallets of coffee. There are people who want to have a connection with a small farm, know who they're working with, and maybe buy 500 pounds a year and feature that farm. So it's something we're very proud of because it can fit for any kind of seller. If you have five acres and you just want to have a connection in addition to a little bit of roasted coffee, we have buyers who are interested. And they're, they're actually still reaching out to me now, and that's part of what we're doing in the future is getting a full list so we can coordinate who's interested in selling with who's interested in purchasing. So that's a lot about what Shaq is doing on the marketing side, and, and I talk a lot about that because that's where I do most of my work, but Shaq is really so much more than just the marketing. Um, it's really a key right now to guiding Hawaii's coffee industry through what we all would say are very challenging times. Um, right now, here's a snapshot of the Hawaii coffee industry, and this is from pretty much uh, mid 2022. It's about 150 million in the roast evaluation, um, almost 1,500 growers spread across the islands, we focused on the specialty market, and of course, Kona is a key brand, remains so here in Hawaii. And we're all facing this huge crisis with coffee leaf rust. Coffee berry borer was very difficult to deal with, still is. Coffee leaf rust is, is on top of it. So what is Shaq trying to do to help? A lot. Shaq's doing a lot. And when I say Shaq, in this part, I mean Suzanne. She's not going to give herself credit, but I will give her credit. She's done a lot here. Um, we have a multi-state effort here going for the uh, SCRI grant. It includes Hawaii, it also includes Puerto Rico because it's a U.S. territory. And our working group includes a whole lot of different um, areas. We have Purdue University, we have uh, the UH, the ARS is in this, and SHAC as well. It's a consortium that, that's gotten together to get a four-year, $6.07 million grant that runs through December 2025. And Shaq was integral to obtaining the funding and coordination for this program and some oversight responsibilities. We're very proud of the fact that Shaq's been able to use this money and use our leverage to help other groups here in Hawaii. We all work with CTAR a, a, a great deal. What they do at the Extension Service is important to us all. Well, part of this grant brought $550,000 for the CTAR Extension Program 
so that they could come up with programs for sprays and collaborate. And Shack has been integral not only to getting that money, but trying to continue to make sure it's working and is implemented well. What's in the SCRI grant? Well, here, here's a nice list um, that kind of explains that. Um, you have the field trials of rust-resistant varietals. You have clonal propagation of varieties. We have new root knot nematode testing. Nem nematodes have always, of course, been a problem, not just for coffee, but for floriculture and other commodities as well. Um, we have monitoring on non-resistant uh, farms, field health programs, field management programs, and pathogen and host characterization. So it's a very comprehensive look at what our industry needs to do to get through this challenge with coffee leaf rust that, that's hit us all. And we're not done. There's a lot there to do, of course, but we're, we're doing even more. There's more help on the way. What, what's been very helpful for Shaq in marketing and in working on the, in the SCRI grant is the connections that we're able to make. When we went to Taiwan this year, we did work with the uh, Agricultural Trade Office. And so the, the ATOs have offices all around the world promoting exports. Well, our work with them was so successful that this year, in 2023, when the Hawaii booth is in Taiwan, they're connected with the uh, World Coffee Championships. And they're looking at maybe getting a joint, a collaborative effort to promote Hawaii coffee as American coffee at the World Coffee Championships in Taiwan. You see the same thing happening on the legislative side. Shaq is in connection with the World Coffee Research and with the NCA, the National Coffee Association, aiming for USDA funding and support for the coffee industry. And that's, that's a pretty big deal. What it means is that we can maybe get access to getting things that we're interested in on the 2023 Farm Bill, which is gonna be coming up this summer. And that's not only, um, sorry, I lost my space there. That's not only m money for coffee research, but it's money for pest protection. It, it's the kind of funding that we've sorely needed, but it's very difficult for the industry on its own to get, and even the state of Hawaii to get. And we're making good progress, not only putting that forward, but getting it forward to the right people. It's really a key that our new state, uh, our new U.S. Representative Joe Takuda is on the Ag Committee in the House, which means she gets to be part of the Farm Bill being crafted. We also have entreaties into the U.S. Senate. Someone that understands now the plight of Hawaii coffee is the Georgia Senator Raphael Warnock. And it's because of the collaborative efforts we have with WCR and NCA that we've been able to get the story of Hawaii coffee in front of Senator Warnock. And now you have an ally in the House and in the Senate. These are the kind of things that we're trying to do here with Shaq. We have a lot more going on the way. I'm gonna stop rambling and take as many questions as I can, but I did wanna end it by introducing you to everyone else who's part of the Shaq team. Um, other than myself, Madeline Longoria Garcia, she is my fellow uh, board member from the Coffee Association. She's also, of course, outside serving great coffees and giving information for Pacific Coast research. Uh, Joan Ober, who is our Shack grant writer, she was ill today and could not make it, so apologies there. And of course, our administrator, Suzanne Schreiner. So that's a pretty brief uh, overview of Shack. I'm happy to take any questions, and thank you for having me here today. Okay. What's the threshold for an agricultural product being allowed into the shack? Can you repeat it? Okay. You asked for the threshold for an agricultural product to be let into the state of Hawaii or into? No, into I see. To, be, to become a member. Yeah. All right. I'll start this answer, and I'm sure Suzanne's going to have a little bit more to say. I, I know that one of the initial things that we're looking at is, are these companies looking to export? Because part of the money we get is the market access program, and that's specifically focused on U.S. exports. Um, I think as Shaq broadens, that, that that may change a little bit, but I think we're looking for commodities that are, that are looking to grow and 
have a collaborative um, spirit about uplifting Hawaii agriculture as a whole. I mean, I think we, we've done a good job of trying to work together and help each other out and, and give ourselves coll a collective um, ability to work in the state and federally, which I don't know what's happening in the past. Did you leave anything out? Okay. She says it's good, so it's good. Does that make, make sense or? From the first thing they'd have to do is reach out. I think part of the issue is kind of reversed. I don't think industries know about us. So part of what we're doing right now is saying, here we are and this is what we do. And that may inspire a little bit more interest. Is that, all right. Second, second time worked. <laughs> Anything else for us? Um, no, I think that's a great question. That's something we thought about as we went to these shows. Um, oh, I'm sorry, yes. The, the question was how, I'll paraphrase it and let me know if this works for you, is that there's kind of a juxtaposition here where small farmers are having uh, huge problems with production. We're all dealing with leaf rust. Maybe we're having to stump fields or prune them aggressively. How do you promote to a new industry, a new a region like Taiwan, but at the same time, not have as much coffee to sell. Is that the essence of what you're asking? Right. What, what I would say in my years of working with these, um, with groups in Asia in particular, is that the long-term relationship is what's important. So we've emphasized to the Taiwanese buyers who came in October that, hey, there are a lot of challenges right now in the industry. We told them this up front. Rust is here, you, you know rust because you deal with rust. Taiwan has its own coffee region, in addition to what they may buy in other areas. It's new to Hawaii, we're, we're in the process of dealing with it. Things may be a little restrictive now in what you can buy, but this is an opportunity to meet people face to face, meet the folks you wanna work with, see the farm, see what we're doing, so that maybe in two or three years, we, and when the industry's back on the upswing, there'll be more coffee for you. So it's, it's a bit of a longer term investment, but I think that's important for buyers in, in those regions to, to feel like they're coming in and getting in on the long term. So setting up roots, it's just like a coffee tree. It won't be there in a year, but you keep it strong, it'll be there for years to come. So you're asking about the honey industry here and that, I'm sorry? Got it. Okay. So, All right, so I'll, let me see if I can, uh, summarize that for you and let me know if this is wrong. You're asking on behalf of the of Hawaii's honey industry, which is pretty small and not quite organized fully yet right now, but you have issues with competition coming from Okay, so you're, you'd be asking what Shaq could do for you as far as growing the number of honey producers and allowing it to, to grow, dealing with the competition that you face? Is that, is that the essence of the question? I'm, I just wanna make sure. No? Okay. Okay, I, I, as far as setting up an organization, I'm not sure how to how to assist with that. I'm sure that if we had discussions and got your information that we could talk it over with Suzanne and other members and see if there's advice we could give. I mean, I think another agricultural organization would be great. I've had honey from several regions of Hawaii. It's all really good. Um, and so I, 
but I, I don't know that I have any answers as far as um, the, how to set that up for you. We can, we can ask around. I'll be happy to help. So, okay. Well, thank you again, everybody, for having me here.